Hi, this is Blaine Lang and I work for Nextide. We are a Drupal consulting firm located in Burlington, Ontario, just outside Toronto. And we'll do anything Drupal, but have an area of expertise around business applications. We've developed a number of modules for Drupal, and in this video we're going to walk through the complete steps to install File Depot. We're going to start with a clean Drupal 7 installation. File Depot has not yet been installed, it's been downloaded. We're going to install the current dev version of File Depot. This is the release as of March 14th. Um, the current uh, version is 1.0. Um, we'll soon have a 1.1 release, but uh, for this uh, we're going to install uh, the dev version. A couple things are different on the dev version and I'll, I'll try to point those out. So, um, it's got a couple requirements. The, the uh, libraries module, uh, the libraries API has to be installed as well as the ctools module. So, that'll get installed automatically when we uh, enable it. We'll be prompted to install that. That's fine, we'll continue. Alright, we've got uh, File Depot installed and um, in the dev version, um, soon to be the 1.1 release, I've added uh, help information here for it's in the README file, that's in the module directory, currently it's in the README file, but uh, I pulled that into the online help here. So what we need to do is there are some requirements, 5.2 um, and JSON, um, Need the JSON extension, but as I noted here, it's already uh, embedded with the 5.2 extension if you're running 5.2 or greater. We need to get a couple of JavaScript libraries, uh, specifically um, an HTML encoder and the jQuery block UI JavaScript library. There's two methods to, uh, to get these uh, libraries. One is um, with the current dev release, I've added a new Drush um, command. And by executing Drush File Depot dash libraries, if you've got Drush installed, it'll automatically download the libraries, unarchive them, create the libraries directory, put the libraries file, um, the JavaScript libraries where they need to be, all in one nice step. Now we're going to walk through the manual process here. That's currently what most people are doing. And um, in order to do that, we need to first create a, uh, a libraries folder on your site's all libraries. So let's do that. So as the directions indicated, um, under our sites all, we need a libraries folder. So let's create that. Done. The next step it says that we need to create two folder names. Um, they're all lowercase. And that's very important because some, some users have been uh, not using uh, lowercase and combining lowercase and uppercase. So we need a sites all libraries, HTML encoder, and another folder called jQuery.blockUI. So let's do that. Alright, we've now got a Sites All Libraries, um, under Sites All Libraries we have two folders, HTML Encoder and jQuery.blockUI, just as it asks. The first file that we want to get is htmlencoder.js. Um, in the online help here, this, this is a link, it will take me directly to the author's site, but uh, if you uh, got the older version or you're looking at the readme file, um, just uh, type the URL in. And I'm going to click on this and we're going to want to save the file as htmlencoder.js. This is taking me to the author's site, and um, I'm just going to save this file now in the um, in the site's all jQuery. Uh, in this case, I want to go in HTML encoder, and we want to call that file HTML encoder.js as the directions indicated. The next file that we want is the jQuery.blockUI.js. Again, we want to save it. Um, as this file. We'll note that when I click on the link, it's going to take us again to the author's uh, download site. Um, the default name that they have is not exactly the same. I've changed it to be completely lowercase um, to keep things clear. So I'm going to go to the author's site and uh, it's asking us to click on here to download it. I'll go get it and again I'm going to save this file as the uh, the name in the readme file and the online help indicated. So I'm going to put this in the jQuery.blockUI file and it just needs to be all lowercase dot js. All right. So just bringing back the Windows Explorer here and looking at the directory under sites all libraries, we've got HTML underscore encoder, and in there we've got the one file HTML underscore encoder dot js, and under the jQuery dot block UI directory, again all lowercase, we have the jQuery dot block UI dot js just as indicated. So just returning to the uh, home page, at this point we've enabled the module, we've uh, made sure the libraries API was uh, module was enabled, 
we've added the libraries folder. We've installed the two required JavaScript libraries for File Depot. Let's launch File Depot. We're going to see this warning. We haven't set up the private file system yet, so let's go do that. And I'm just going to give it private files here. All right, so now we can go to File Depot and we won't see that warning. It looks a lot better if we get rid of these blocks, so I'm just going to change the um, visibility on this. Um, all pages except File Depot and File Depot slash star. We do that for the two blocks. All right, so now we'll access File Depot with those blocks now um, not visible. When I access File Depot, it looks a lot better. We should now be able to create a new folder. Under the top level, that's fine. And let's create a new file. Alright, so File Depot is now operational and running. Let's just take a minute and explore some of the File Depot configuration. So under Config, File Depot, Settings. Um, we've got a number of areas here, so let's just explore them. Base Setup. Um, this is the uh, URL that we require for the Yahoo JavaScript libraries, UE. And uh, this is currently the uh, content delivery network at Yahoo. but um, it is also supported. We can actually use local um, copy of the Yahoo libraries and uh, that's noted in the uh, readme file how to do that. Um, there's a couple of performance settings we have here. One of the things that uh, File Depot does is it's a multi-pass um, uh, type of display. When you have a large file listing to display, uh, in order to optimize performance and get the folders and files listed quickly, we show um, initially two files per folder and then while the folders are being rendered we uh, kick off multiple AJAX requests in the background and, just, and bring back a second pass and fill in those folders in this case up to another uh, 10 and then if there's more than 10 then uh, there will be a link there showing you to click um, to download the rest of them. Um, this is done because uh, we work with repositories that literally have hundreds um, of files in a folder and if you have um, hundreds and potentially a thousand folders um, right now the way File Depot works, it's going to go off and try to render that complete repository. And uh, so this is a performance um, feature here. You could, uh, we don't want to render uh, a thousand folders um, all of, with hundreds of files in each one. So we'll quickly get you a snapshot and then as users navigate through the repository, um, they will be able to retrieve the files that they want um, for that particular folder. So as performance. There are some defaults here for notifications. There's a number of notification function uh, features built into uh, File Depot, and these are the defaults. Um, either you want you want to enable notifications, you want to allow admin to do broadcast. Um, the owner of a file can actually broadcast out that there's been an, uh, an update to the file. By default, do you want users to get notifications on new files? And by default, do you want users to get notifications on file changes? So that's the defaults for that. Users can override those, of course. A couple of number of miscellaneous options. Um, file Depot allows you to lock a file. And if it is locked, you want people to be able to download it while it's being locked for edit. We have an index feature which um, shows you uh, an automated index number beside the folders and files. It's a nice reference number. Um, turn it on if you want. Turn it off if you don't. Um, we've got a couple options here for how the files are going to be displayed, either alphabetically or descending order by date. And in here we've got two, two settings. One is uh, what type of files do you want to allow? what extension type do you want to allow and the other is a mapping of that extension to a, um, an icon in this case uh, File Depot has a number of icons in its directory um, you can either use those default icons add your own or, or um, if you, there's some additional uh, or if there's an additional extension type that you want you can supply the icon for it um, then some default permissions so we provide a um, pretty extensive permissioning system there are six permissions that we let you uh, assign per folder and then you assign those permissions to either to users, um, organic groups if installed, or by role, any combination of it. So you could assign view permission um, to a user like role authenticated user, then give upload direct to a particular user, and then um, additional permission for a particular organic group, any combination of it. 
Um, so this kind of sets the defaults. When you're creating a new folder, what defaults do you want to have uh, created? So we've covered off how to install File Depot, plus the required JavaScript libraries, get those set up. We launched File Depot, saw the message about the private file system. We set up the private file system if it wasn't already set up. Um, we walked through some basic functionality of File Depot, creating a folder and a file. And then we've explored the various settings here. Um, for the, uh, the module itself. And at that point you have a fully running file depot, um, a collaborative document management solution for Drupal. Thank you very much and uh, if you've got any questions or issues please don't hesitate to post them in the issue queue. This is Blaine with Nextai and I hope you found that useful. Bye for now.